Hello there, my name's Scott. Today I'm going to be doing a review slash tutorial on the Genesis Line V2 repairable atomizer, which I purchased from uh, well via the forum at www.vaporwall.com. So basically, if you are interested in getting yourself one of these, you have to go along to vaporwall.com, join the forum, and then you'll find all the information there. Okay, so uh, it's going to be a fairly longish uh, tutorial, so I won't waste sort of uh, too much time. Let's uh, crack on and uh, show you how to get it all set up. Okay, so before I start the actual uh, tutorial, I thought I'd give you a quick look of the uh, the Genesis line, just to sort of uh, try and explain how it actually works. Now, this is the uh, the V2. I have been using the V1 uh, for about the last sort of five weeks. Been really enjoying using that. And uh, there's not a massive amount of difference between the V2 and the V1. Um, it's just little things like the font has changed. You've got slightly longer threads where the uh, the top cap screws on and the silver posts are made out of a, uh, a stronger sort of silver wire. So there's like, to look at, you know, there isn't a, a massive amount of difference between the two. Okay, so uh, the V2 uh, and the V1 made out of uh, stainless steel uh, with the exception of the actual uh, tank. And the tank holds around, I think it's 1.8 millilitres of e-liquid. Running through the centre of the tank, you're going to find a uh, two pieces of silver wire. Uh, one will act as your positive connection and one will act as your negative connection. And the silver wire is connected to the 510 connection down here, runs all the way through the tank and comes out at the top. In between the two uh, silver connections, you'll find some stainless steel mesh, which is going to act as your wick. And it uses a capillary action to soak up the e-liquid and feed it up to the heating coal up here. So if I just uh, unscrew this, you should be able to get a better idea of how it actually works. So in the centre there, you can see you've got your uh, steel mesh, and on either side you have your silver connection, so one will be the positive and one will be the negative. And then you get your canthal wire, wrap it around one post, then wrap it around your uh, mesh wick, and then you wrap it around the other post. Then uh, when you press the button, hopefully it should all uh, fire up and uh, give you lots of nice vapour, as you can see. Okay, so it is a stainless steel uh, mesh wick, and obviously stainless steel is going to conduct electricity, which is what you don't want to happen. So you do need to uh, oxidise the mesh wick. So the best way to do that is to, or the best way to show you how to do that is to crack on with the rest of the tutorial. Okay, so here we have all the basic things you're going to need in order to uh, make up your Genesis Line V2. They are a uh, cigarette lighter, a piece of 400 super fine stainless steel mesh, your Genesis Line V2, a syringe with a filling needle in order to actually fill the tank up with your chosen e-liquid, uh, some 0.20 gauge canthal wire, and I do recommend using the 0.20 canthal rather than nichrome, as nichrome tends to be a little bit problematic when it comes to sort of Genesis style atomizers, as it tends to uh, stretch. Whereas it, when I use the, uh, the canthal, I don't have any problems whatsoever. And lastly, you're going to need one of these things, which is a, uh, a chef's blowtorch or creme brulee torch. If you haven't got one of these, you can get away with using the hob on a gas oven. If you haven't got a gas oven, then as a last resort, you can use like a, a regular sort of cigarette lighter. Though uh, results do tend to sort of vary a little bit, and it is a little bit of a longer process. So ideally, if you can get yourself one of these uh, chef's blowtorch, it makes life a lot simpler. Okay, so let's uh, crack on. Okay, so the first thing I'm going to start with then is uh, making up and oxidising the stainless steel mesh wick. Now, you're going to find sort of different people will have different methods on how to actually do this. And, you know, whatever method works for you, that is the correct way. Uh, you know, and this is just the way that I do it for myself personally. And, you know, it seems to uh, work no, perfectly fine for me. Um, okay, so what I tend to do is I cut the mesh out at 40 millimeters lengthways by 30 millimeters widthways. So it'll be 40 by 30. Now I've seen other people you know cut it at different sizes, but this is just the way that it works for me personally. Now what you need to do then is roll it up into a nice little sort of a tube, basically. Now some people do like to sort of you know wrap it around something like this uh, to keep it all nice and sort of straight but uh, personally I do find it easier just to sort of make out as a sort of rolling up a, an old sort of tobacco cigarette 
So you're just literally going to roll it over like that. And then just start twisting it in between your finger and thumbs. Obviously at the moment now you can see it's quite uh, quite fat. But the more you start to basically just sort of roll it between your finger and thumbs, then the, uh, the tighter it becomes. That's what she said. And also you just need to sort of try and gauge it to make sure that it fits down the uh, the central hole of the uh, the line. With that, you don't need it being uh, sort of too tight, but you don't need it being sort of too loose either. So I'm just gonna carry on for a little bit longer. And that should be about right. And yeah, that's it, pretty much perfect. So you've got a little bit of uh, a little bit of sort of uh, clearance there, so it's not completely and utterly stiff. Okay, so here is a mesh and it's all wound up properly, and I know it's going to fit down that hole without being sort of too tight or too loose. Now for the next bit, I like to cut one end off just at a bit of a, a slight angle, so that I know that when it if it does happen to be sort of touching the bottom of the tank. You know, there's still going to be a little bit of sort of uh, like airflow there. So I'm just going to get the scissors and literally just hold it at about a sort of 45 degree angle and just cut that off. And then if I just sort of uh, roll it out a bit again, just to make sure it's uh, all going to be like still tube like. Hopefully you can still see there's a bit of daylight down there. Okay, so that's that part done. We're going to the, uh, the next stage, which will be actually oxidizing the mesh. Okay, for the next stage, we're going to actually start oxidizing the stainless steel mesh wick. And uh, we're going to do this by holding it into the uh, a very hot flame until it turns bright red. And then we're going to quickly quench it into this cold water. And after you've done this a couple of times, you can see that the uh, the mesh will start building up like a, like a layer of carbon, basically, uh, which will then prevent it from conducting electricity and also helps with the uh, capillary action of soaking up the e-liquid. For obvious reasons, you know, these flames are extremely hot, so please be very careful and obviously, you know, just do it at your own risk. Okay, so I'm just going to turn on the old burner and hopefully it won't burn everything else down. I'm just going to hold it in the flame until it starts going bright red, just working like one half at a time into the water. Now, I just soak, I just um, basically just sort of flick the water back onto the floor and then just go straight back into the flame. It just takes a little bit longer to heat up, but it's, uh, it's a quicker method for me personally. I'm going to do this uh, three times in total. And then uh, I'm going to swap ends and just do the other half as well. And when I've done the, uh, the maxi tutorial, I didn't bother doing both ends, but the line is a little bit more fussy. So just to make things easy, I'll just do both ends when I'm using the, uh, the Genesis lines. That's it, turn it off. Give that another quick shake. Oh, you sod. <laughs> Not a lot of room to move about, yeah? Right, and that is it. Your um, your wick is uh, all oxidised and we're ready to move on to the, uh, the next stage. Okay, for this next stage, what I'm going to do is uh, take some e-liquid and working one half at a time, I'm going to coat it in e-liquid, then sort of uh, set it alight with the, uh, the lighter just let it sort of burn out naturally and do that three times on one half and then I'm going to do the same thing on the other half too. 
And the reason I do this is because I personally find that it really does help tremendously with the uh, like the wicking process. And for whatever reason, it really does um, help to sort of, you know, start soaking up that e-liquid. So like I said, I'm just going to work one half at a time. And a little tip for you, whatever half you're going to be holding in your hand, stick that into a bit of water, like so. And uh, then what that does, it basically prevents the flame from uh, traveling too close to your fingers. So I'm just going to sort of run it along the edge there. And take my lighter and uh, just set it alight. And just do it another two more times. And you can see that each time you do it, the liquid sort of soaks into the mesh a little bit more quicker than what it did the uh, the previous time. And before you add like your next bit of a uh, liquid, just make sure the flame has gone completely out. When I was doing my uh, maxi tutorial, where I'm not against a white background, it's a little bit hard to see. And the flame hadn't gone totally out and it created a little bit of a, uh, a fireball. <laughs> That's it, now just swap over the ends. I'm just gonna dip that a little bit into the uh, water. As you can see, like, it actually sort of cools down all very quickly. So I'm just gonna add a few drops onto that. Actually, that's the bit I just done, isn't it? <laughs> right, let's put this end in the water. And last one. I know it may seem like a lot of hassle doing this, but obviously bear in mind I'm doing it as slowly as I possibly can, just because I want to sort of try and show you guys how to do it. And uh, but you know when it literally the whole process you can be done in less than sort of like five or six minutes really. And you only have to do it sort of once every blue moon. Uh, the actual uh, mesh is uh, last, uh, the mesh wicks last uh, quite a while. And that's it, all complete. So we can go into the, uh, the next stage now. Now at this stage, I normally fill my tank up with my chosen e-liquid. Then I'll put my steel mesh uh, wick in there. And then that way you can start sort of soaking up the e-liquid. And while that's happening, uh, I can then go and sort of uh, prepare my wire. Now the problem with adding the e-liquid at this stage is that uh, when it comes to wrapping the coils, you, know, you do start getting little bits of e-liquid onto your fingers. Now for me, that doesn't bother me at all because once I've finished uh, doing the coil, I'll just go and rinse my hands off under a tap. But if you are a person who um, is a little bit more cautious about getting e-liquid onto your fingers for whatever reason, then obviously um, you know, you're probably better off doing your coil first and then adding your e-liquid. So it's entirely up to you what way you do it. But me personally, I'm going to start adding my e-liquid now so then that mesh can start soaking it all up when I'm uh, getting my wire prepared. So you're on the side here amongst the fridge, you've got your filling hole. And I'm just going to use a syringe. But if you have got one of those, uh, I've got one here, but it's a little bit leaky. You got one of those bottles with the like the pin at the end now, and you can uh, use one of those as well, which um, is handy for uh, if you're out and about. You don't fancy taking a syringe out with you. 
So just for time purposes, I've got a cinch here filled up with some juice. I'm just gonna stick that in the hole and give it a gentle squeeze. And like I said, you should be able to get about 1.8 to uh, two mils of juice in there. I've not filled up the syringe enough, have I? I will have that for a moment. Yeah, that'll be all right. And now I'm just gonna get my mesh and just uh, plunk that through the center. And that can be uh, starting to sort of uh, feed the, uh, the wick up the top there. Uh, whilst I go on to the next stage and get my wire ready. Okay, so for the next stage, you're going to just sort of prepare the canthal wire. Uh, now, the reason why you need to do this is because the canthal is quite sort of springy and you can wrap it around the coils and around the post uh, and then what will happen is it will almost sort of spring off a little bit. So you need it to be sort of fairly tight fitting. And uh, by doing this, then basically it just sort of... Uh, I think it's the words temper zips, which just makes it a little bit more sort of manageable. So you just got to, once you cut off your length of wire, and I'll probably cut off about sort of, it's probably about sort of just over 20 centimeters there. Just because I like to have enough to be able to actually sort of work with quite comfortably. And just going to take my lighter, hold it against the wire, and just sort of run it along the length of it. Uh, you can see it obviously glowing as you move it along. And I'm just going to do that three times. Number two. And last one. Okay, so that's it, all done. We can now actually go and start uh, wrapping up our coil. Okay, so what I'm gonna do now then is start making up my coils. I'm gonna start off on this shorter post here. I'm gonna wrap three turns around the shorter post. Then I'm gonna try and wrap five coils around the stainless steel mesh wick. And then I'm gonna finish off on three turns on this longer post. Now, how many coils you wrap around will sort of basically uh, play a part in what resistance you're gonna achieve at the end of it. The uh, more coils or the longer the length of the wire used and like the higher the resistance. And because I'm going to be using it on a Provary, I want to create a resistance of around sort of 1.6 ohms, otherwise it will start causing me problems. And uh, five coils normally sort of gets me 1.6 ohms, sort of pretty much um, on the spot. Okay, so I'm going to get my wire and just hold it in place against my thumb like that. And I'm going to wrap three coils and then a shorter post here whilst trying to keep my hand in shot. And you want to sort of put it fairly tight, but you don't want to sort of be putting the post about too much. So it's quite a good idea is when you're pulling it tight, just to sort of rest your finger against the post to sort of counteract it. Because uh, you know, if you start pulling the post about sort of too much, you will make them weak and eventually there's a good chance that they're going to snap. Okay, so I've got three coils going around the shorter post. Now I'm going to uh, wrap five coils around the actual stainless steel mesh wick. And don't be afraid to sort of use your fingernails to sort of get it down there because you want to sort of try and make sure it's all uh, nice and neat. Hold it in place over the top and then back down. Hold it in place over the top and back down. And it's basically just repeat that until now, as you can hopefully see, I've got five coils. I'm going to finish it off on one, two, three coils around the top. And just put everything, make sure everything's all sort of fairly nice and tight. And the coils are all nicely sort of evenly spaced. And like I said, no, don't be afraid to sort of use your fingernails or a little pin, just sort of straighten them out a bit. And hopefully that should be all okay. I'll just move that a little bit down that touch. And uh, so hopefully that is what you'll have. So like I said, I've got five coils on one side and on the other side, I've got four coils. And from there, I'm just gonna take a set of uh, cutters and just uh, cut off the excess wire. And I'm gonna cut it as close as I can. Spin it over and do the same thing here. And 
and make sure where well, you can see you've got a little bit of wire there sticking out hopefully you can see it just make sure that's not sticking out so just wrap that around as well and tuck it out of the way and also at the bottom as well because if that bit of wire starts touching the uh like the uh the top as you screw it on and that's going to cause you some problems Okay, then, uh, so what I'm going to do now is attach it onto my Provary, just so I can sort of fire it up, make sure things are uh, working correctly, and also I can check the old resistance as well. So I've got my uh, Provary set at its lowest voltage setting, which is 3.3 volts. And I can see the uh, capillary reaction is working nicely. The, uh, the stainless steel mesh wick is uh, soaking wet there with juice, so I'm just going to fire it up, and hopefully it will work. Which it does, no hot spots either, so that's all good. Okay, so uh, what I'm going to do then is check the older uh, resistance, which hopefully should read around 1.5, 1.6, and it's saying uh, 1.4. So it's a little bit lower than what it normally come out. Normally it comes out as 1.5, 1.6. But uh, once I've uh, sort of been vaping on this for about sort of 30 minutes or so, then obviously that uh, the actual uh, coil will start getting a build up of carbon. And then the resistance increases a little bit as well. So that probably will end up about sort of 1.5, 1.6. Okay, so then I just need to add on the uh, the lid. And that's it. I can uh, go and have a nice vape. Okay, so let's uh, go ahead and uh, show you in action. Okay, so that is the Genesis Line V2. Uh, now, I'm sure a lot of people are going to be watching that tutorial and thinking, what a load of old faff, can't be arsed with all that jazz, too long-winded, etc, etc. And uh, I've got to be honest, like, when you haven't got the cameras there and you're just working at your own pace, once you've done it a couple of times, you can do the whole process from start to finish in probably about sort of six minutes. So it's really not that much of a big deal at all. And uh, with regards to sort of making the actual uh, mesh wick, you probably can get away with doing that maybe sort of like once a month, something like that. They do last quite a while. And with uh, the actual coil, now I tend to put on a new coil at least like once a week. Not because it actually needs a new coil, but just because I, I quite enjoy doing it, to be quite honest. You know, so when you consider it like that, you know, doing six minutes work, maybe once a month, is it really that much of a big deal? For me, it's not anyway. Okay, so I've filled up my line with my favourite Titan Fluid Tobacco. It's just an 18 milligram strength. Uh, it's just a PGE liquid. I have been vaping this for about half hour now, just giving it a little top up before I start recording the rest of the uh, review. And uh, the resistance of the coil has gone up slightly, so it's now reading 1.6 ohms. And so I've boosted the old voltage up to 3.7 volts. As you can see, like, is a really nice amount of vapour, even just like a, a straightforward sort of PGE liquid. Now for me, one of the best things about the, uh, the Genesis atomizers is the flavour. And the flavour with the old uh, Titan Fluid Tobacco comes out absolutely fantastic. Just really nice, full-on, sort of rich flavour. I notice a few people on the forum say that when they've sort of put on a new... Uh, uh, coil that they're finding the sort of first sort of couple of tanks worth of vaping, they get quite a strong sort of metallic taste. Now, for me personally, I've never had any sort of metal taste um, or metallic taste whatsoever with any of my sort of Genesis atomizers. You know, literally, I'll sort of make it up and straight away the flavour's really nice and sort of full and strong. Uh, the only thing I do notice is that when I put on a fresh wick and a fresh uh, uh, coil, is that the first sort of half hour. The throw hit is very, very strong. It really is sort of quite harsh. You're still getting all the flavour, all the vapour, etc. But the throw hit is definitely sort of pretty harsh. But literally, after about sort of half an hour's worth of vaping, the throw hit sort of calms down a bit, and it just sort of, for me, it's just pretty much sort of perfect. And uh, one thing I didn't really sort of, uh, <coughs> excuse me, uh, touch on during those close-up shots was the actual sort of build quality. And the build quality is uh, is excellent. All the threads, you know, screw together really nice and smooth. The actual finish of it is very nice indeed. 
it just looks like a, an extremely well crafted uh, repairable atomizer and I, you know, I can't really fault it at all. And it's all slight negative would be the uh, capacity of the tank. It's only like 1.8 mils. And uh, I suppose really like I don't sort of vape it right down to it's completely and utterly bone dry. I vape it to it's just about going out, out of the, uh, like the window to probably about maybe 0.3 of a mil, something like that. And uh, so I'm probably getting about just over one or probably about one and a half mil of vaping time out of each tank. So you are having to sort of fill it up sort of several times a day. But literally to fill it up, you just got to unscrew the lid slightly, just so you can see the, uh, the little hole, the filling hole, get your needle, fill it in there, give it a squeeze, do it back up again, and that's it, you can start vaping. So it literally takes about sort of 10 seconds to refill. So when you view it like that, you know, capacity wise isn't really that bad and I wouldn't want it any bigger to be quite honest this is like the perfect size really if it was any bigger I think it would start no I think it would take away the uh, the nice uh, look of it really so overall you know that I can't really sort of praise it enough really and I you know, I very much enjoy using the uh, repairable atomizers not just this one I've got you know, I've got quite a few now and they all give you that sort of slightly different experience, but I prefer any of them over your regular sort of 510 atomizers, your car atomizers, give me a repairable any day of the week. Okay guys, there's not a great deal else I can really sort of tell you about it. You know, so if you fancy trying one out for yourself, then you have to go along to www.vaporwall.com, then uh, sign up for the forum, and then you'll find all the information that you need there. Thank you very much for watching, and also come along and visit my website at www.esigreviews.com, that's e sig-reviews.com. Cheers guys, happy vaping, see you later.